Hey everybody, Andy with Get Your Meat. Uh, a, about a year ago, I was approached uh, while well, I was on a podcast with the Western Huntsman, Jim Huntsman, um, and we, we got to talking about smoking. And Jim, he likes to use a, a charcoal style kettle uh, to do a lot of his barbecue and stuff like that. Uh, what he didn't want to, or what he doesn't really know how to do it is smoke. He thought he needed to buy a, a fancy smoker and that kind of thing. Today I'm actually going to show you that you don't need to go and buy an $800 smoker just to smoke some meat. Uh, you can actually cold smoke inside of a kettle as well as hot smoke and there is a big difference. Me personally, I like to cold smoke. I do a lot of cured products throughout the shop uh, so I, I'm doing a lot of uh, cold smoking. So yes, it does take me four hours to make a steak but my steak is super tender and it's got great uh, volume of, of smoke in there. Uh, Today, we will show you, uh, sorry my briquettes are a little dwindled out, this is, we keep <laughs> trying to pause the video and we're not real te technologically <laughs> smart, so uh, we just keep shutting it off and so we're starting over again. Uh, anyways, uh, as you can tell here, my briquettes are grayed, uh, they've been on here a little bit and that's what you're actually looking for. You want the briquettes for a heat source, obviously you want to cook your meat. Uh, but you can notice that my, my briquettes are actually pushed off to the side, and there's a reason behind that. I want my heat on one side, and I want my meat on another, which we will show here in just a little bit. Uh, today, though, uh, for this style of smoking, we're going to use more of a wood chunk. Uh, this is kind of my smaller style woods. Um, I usually use a bigger split or something like that on a lot of my offset smokers or my vaulted smokers. Uh, but for something like this, we don't want to use a wood chip. A wood chip is going to go up in flames too fast uh, unless you wrap it in aluminum foil and then it will kind of sit there and smolder a little bit and give you some smoke quality, but not not that deep, dark smoke ring that you're actually looking for when you try to smoke meat. Uh, this will do that. Uh, you'll notice that on all my wood, I actually have bark on one side and then I have my, my plain wood on the other side. There's a reason behind that. I actually use this bark as kind of a uh, um, heat shield, if you will. I, I don't want this to light on fire. I want this to sit there and smolder. Uh, so if I put it this side down, it's going to smolder for a little bit, and all of a sudden it's going to burst up in flames, and then I'm going to be playing with my flue and, and opening the lid and doing all that stuff. And I don't want that. I want it to sit there and just smolder. Uh, this is where all your smoke comes from, not your heat. So uh, you'll notice I put this right in the center of the coals, bark side down. And we put our grill rack on. Sorry, this, this grill rack is a little dirty, uh, or this grill itself is a little dirty. I don't use this thing. It was just kind of kicking around in the back of the storage, so we dug it out and decided we're going to go ahead and do this video for you guys. Uh, so we're going to give this about couple minutes you can already see that the smoke is starting to kind of come up out of it you can hear some crackling and some popping and stuff like that and that's just the the separation of I believe the bark and the, the wood uh, getting all those uh, I don't know if they're really mo water molecules or air molecules or the pockets or whatever uh, but the crackling that's that's actually a good sound you, you want to hear that because uh, that means that your your uh, fire underneath is actually hot enough to go ahead and set that on a smolder. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let that sit for a second. We're gonna go ahead and put our lid on. And you'll notice that I've got the flue completely open and there's a reason behind that. So you wanna have a good solid smoke coming out of your flue before you, you start dampening it down. Um, so in just a minute, you'll kind of start seeing right now the, the smoke is running just a little bit dirty. Uh, the color of your smoke determines how your meat's gonna taste. By the way, uh, dirty smoke is going to be uh, more visible to the naked eye, whereas a clean smoke is going to basically come up and it's gonna be more of a clear uh, with a light haze that goes through it, but you'll actually see heat signatures more than you'll see the smoke. Uh, and that's actually a good smoke. That's what you're looking for. You don't want that real dark, heavy, white, plume of smoke that's going to make your meat kind of uh, taste a little bitter, uh, a little sour, if you will, and you don't want that. Plus, it'll put like a creosote over the top of it, and you, just, you don't want to eat that. I mean, 
there's a reason we sweep that out of a chimney. We, we don't want that. Uh, it, it's nasty. Uh, the big thing you got to do right now is, if you are a drinking man, is pick up your beer and take a break because it's going to be about five minutes before we're going to put any meat on. So we're going to go ahead and wait for just a second, and then we'll put on some meat. But I'm going to go push pause, not stop. So give me one second. Is it working? Okay. It's working. All right. So we gave it a few minutes. Uh, you can see here, uh, it's actually starting to kind of turn black. Uh, got, we had a little bit of flame, uh, but that's actually a good thing because that's actually burning off of what I was talking about. Uh, you can see the smoke coming out of it right now is just a little touch dirty. Uh, and you can see a little bit of fragments coming up out of there. So we're actually going to, uh, we need to add a little bit more charcoal anyways, because it's been so many takes since we uh, started. Uh, so I'm going to show you that you don't actually need to add very much charcoal. I'm actually going to use this chimney. You can see the charcoal is actually not lit. Um, I'm just going to dump these cold charcoals, just a few briquettes. That's all I'm looking for. An old 510, something, somewhere in there. You don't want a whole bunch of them. Again, we're, we're trying to keep our heat low, but localized. Go ahead and put that up in there. You see all that dirty smoke coming off. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is dirty smoke. This is something that we do not want to put meat on quite yet. We want to wait until that clears up. Uh, that's going to put that real bitter, nasty taste. We don't want that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a break. We're going to let this burn off a second, and then we'll be right back. Go. Recording? All right. Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, as you can tell here, I actually did end up adding another piece of wood uh, just to try to clean up some of that smoke. You can see that the first piece of wood that I put on there, it is now on fire. And that's actually okay because right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that charcoal. We're trying to get all that uh, crap out of it. Uh, if you can look at some of these briquettes, you'll see that they have like a green hue on them. And that's that toxin that we don't want to put our, uh, our meat over the top of. Uh, so as soon as that burns off, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll add uh, my jalapeno cheddar brats that uh, a customer uh, of mine donated back to me uh, just so I would have, you know, a little, little treat. Uh, so we're going to use that in the barbecue today. Um, you did, you can see that I did add this extra piece. So this is two different woods. The first wood is a cherry wood. Uh, which I do like using a lot of cherry. I don't like apple. I don't like the smoke quality. Um, so I use a lot of cherry. But I also use a lot of, this happens to be pear over here, this big piece. It's a pear wood. It's a little bit sweeter of a wood. Uh, the smoke's pretty mild on it. Uh, so it'll pair real nice with my broads. Uh, most people think, oh, well, it, wood is wood. So, it, you know, it, it's just smoke. No, it, your wood pairs kind of like your wine or your beer or, or your side dishes. Your wood pairs with what you're making. Uh, everybody wants to do apple wood. It's easy. It's cheap. It's, you know, it's a light smoke. I like something with a little bit more flavor to it, a little bit more body. Uh, I don't like using mesquite uh, simply for the fact that it's, it's too much of a bold smoke for me. Uh, but some of my customers really like it. So I do have some mesquite laying around that I do use if they want that. Uh, for the most part, I use apple, plum, and pear. Or, sorry, cherry, plum, and pear. Uh, I do have some apple that I will throw in on occasion, but it's mostly to stoke a fire. That's generally all I'm using apple for. Uh, apple burns up fast. So, we're going to go ahead and close this guy down. Let a little heat build up. Get that smoke to kind of cover the inside of our chamber. Uh, you can see that my flue is still open. Uh, but I'm, I'm now going to close that flue till it's almost closed because now I want to put this fire out. I don't want that fire on that wood right now. I want it to smolder again. Uh, you can see the smoke coming out of it. It's a little dirty. Uh, we're going to wait for that to kind of clean up and we're going to throw on our jalapeno cheddar broths. So give me one second. Go. Okay. So we're back now. Um, you can see that I've got good smoke rolling out. Uh, it is still very heavy, which once we put these brats on, uh, 
it's actually going to thin out just a little bit. You can see that my my brats are actually frozen. You can put them on fresh or thawed, um, and that's fine. Uh, but we're going to cook these really slow. So these brats are actually going to take a couple of hours. Uh, so it's okay if they're actually wet. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to open this lid up. See all that smoke that just rolls out of there? That's what we want. We don't have a fire no more. That's what we want. So my heat source is over here. My meat's going to go on the cold side. And there's a reason behind that. We don't want to put our meat directly over our heat source because we're not trying to cook it. We're trying to smoke it. Uh, so we're going to keep it right here. We're going to put our lid back on. And we're going to open this flue at first until we get a good smoke out. We're going to open it all the way. So now we're going to look for that smoke to start bailing. So here's that smoke that's starting to come out. So now we'll let it kind of clean itself. Wait for that smoke quality to get it just a little bit better. We're still kind of on the dirtier side. Oh, there it goes. Now we're starting to get the heat back in there. Uh, smoke starting to push out. Check our heat on our flue. That's a very crucial statement or a crucial uh, part of it. You can see that on this particular style, you can actually move your flue wherever you want. Right now, I've got it just above my, my meat because that's what I want to know. I want to know where my heat source is. So you can always put your hand over the top of the flue. And it'll either be cold or it'll be hot. If it's hot, you need to move something. If it's cold, you need to move something. You want it right in between, and there is a feel for that. Uh, and I know a lot of guys that are going to watch this video are going to laugh at me and, and everything, but this is actually something I've studied for a long time on the heat that's coming out of the flu. Uh, if you ever watch me in my shop, I'm constantly putting my hand on all the flus. Not to mention I look at that smoke. So that smoke is actually rolling nice. That's the kind of smoke we want. You can see that it, it's got just that gray hue to it, but it's it's rolling out. It's not just a big plume of white nastiness. Uh, so this is a good clean smoke right here. So now we're going to go ahead. We're going to shut it halfway. And then if you want to see the results, check back on part two.